And he promises he'll do it again. <laughs> Let's sing about that this morning. happened to you this week as you shake their hand. Let them know something good that's happened in your week this week.
hell will not come against it. Amen. And you are the church. So he's building you. How many know God's not done? Amen. Look to the person next to you and say, I know God's not done. <laughs> he is building his church. He is building his church. Great to see everybody here today. Just want to draw your attention to a few things as we uh, continue on. If there's a connect card in your bulletin, go ahead and fill that out. That lets us know you're here. Also gives you a chance to communicate to us. And by the way, we still do every Connect card that we get. We donate $10 to Northeast Community Nursing, so just be aware of that also. So take advantage of that. Also in your bulletin is another card we want to remind you. We are in a big parking lot project, and the deadline, we're asking everyone to submit a card. Any gift, small or large, it's a one-year commitment. If you can drop this in the offering bucket on your way out along with your Connect card, that's where we put them in the bucket at the back of the room after service. We would greatly appreciate that. Uh, so we have this Sunday and next Sunday, we ask, by the end of October, if you would mind trying to get that in. Currently, we haven't got to our deadline yet, but we're, all, we're already over, uh, I think it's $15,000, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're picking away at it to make sure you get your card in. We'd appreciate that. Would you stand with me as we plan to go forward? Father, thank you so much for your grace and your presence with us today. We gather, Lord, with all the faith that you've given us to come and worship you, to praise you, and also to receive from you. Lord, be with us today in a special way as we worship you, we ask in Jesus' name, amen.
search the world But it couldn't fail me Man's empty praise And treasures that fail But never enough And you came along And you put me back together And every desire is now satisfied Here in your love Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Nothing is better than you
one who can. Some of you are up against things you just don't know how you're going to get through. And he is the almighty God. He will lead you through. He answers our prayers. He hears us. He longs for relationship with you. He longs to meet every need that you might have. He takes our sin. He takes our sin. He took it upon a cross. It's gone in the name of Jesus. We walk in freedom. He takes our shame and he throws it out in the sea of forgetfulness, not to ever be remembered again. And he heals and he comes in, he cleanses, he purifies. Whatever you are facing today, I know that I know that I know that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know he is the answer. He is the answer. He goes before us. He comes behind us as we surrender to him, as we give our all to him. He does immeasurably more than what we could ever ask or what we could ever believe. This is all he asks of you, is come to my feet. Come to my feet and lay it down and receive all that I have for you today, no matter what it looks like, no matter where you're at, no matter how much you doubt, no matter how much you're fearing right now, he says, bring it to me. I have the answer.
just worship him at this moment. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's altar. demonstrated I, I want to have a surrendered heart I want you to have it all God I give you all myself Father we are surrendered to you you are the king you are the Lord you call the shots we are your children praise your name Father praise your name Father praise your name Father Take all of our fears, take all of our doubts, take all of our shame. Refresh us, Lord, as we drink of your spirit today. We drink of your spirit today, Lord. Father, touch my brothers and sisters. Oh, God, give them hope and strength today. Oh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, touch them in a way they know they've been touched by you. Jesus, Jesus, move in our lives. Strengthen us today. Have your way. Have your way. Go ahead, tell them, God, I make room for you right now. Work in me. Work in me. Work in me.
to make room as we go forward in prayer. We started this habit of praying the Lord's Prayer. Jesus said, this then is how you should pray. This is how you should pray. And so Lord, uh, we're going to have some thought-provoking things on the screen for you as we pray together. You can pray silently. You can pray out loud. You can pray over someone around you, in front of you. Pray. Just take this moment to let's just pray together your way, okay? house shall be called a house of prayer. I had some notes and I have the wrong ones here. I got to grab my other notes. If you're unaware, uh, praise the Lord, but for many in our church body, we've been going through a very challenging season, uh, many of us. It's just kind of a rare, you know, they come in seasons, they come, they go, but we're in an unusual uh, season these past couple of weeks, especially of uh, tragedy, uh, loss, trauma. I've been feeling surrounded by a lot of weariness, 
feeling it myself for a season. Many of our brothers and sisters have been carrying heavy loads. If you feel like you've been carrying a heavy load, would you raise your hand nice and high? Yeah, a lot of us have been ha- carrying a heavy load this season. If you feel like you've been, uh, I mean, if uh, you can notice it uh, on the prayer video, or some of the prayer requests also. And uh, yesterday we had our, our third funeral in two weeks. Our, our kids' pastor, Tammy, lost her father. Uh, Linda, her mother, lost her husband. And there's just been a lot uh, happening, a lot, a lot of grief. You know, when uh, brothers and sisters grieve, we grieve too. It's, it's heavy. Uh, there have been many things uh, besides that that I can't mention that have been really heart-wrenching. And when you're in a boat in the middle of a storm, it can take a toll on you. And as you know, sometimes God will calm the storms like he did for the disciples out on the lake. And Jesus said to the blowing winds and crashing waves, be calm. And he stopped the storms. God can do that. God did it for Daniel, remember, in the pit he gave the lion's lockjaw. Daniel found his rest. God can bring calm to our situation. Other times God decides to calm us in the situation, in the storm. And in spite of the storms, he gives us a peace that goes beyond an understanding. He provides a strength that goes beyond ourselves. And I want to thank you for the many prayers going up for myself and the staff and others in the in the building, I think we can all say we've been feeling those prayers, prayers of strength. Thank you so very much. And I want to pray today an additional uh, prayer of strength over all of us, if you would mind uh, bowing your heads with me. Father, you are our strength, and we thank you for your words that say, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Thank you for your words that say, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Help us, Lord, to trust you. We thank you, Lord, for the words of David as he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the path for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you're with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Father, thank you for being with us. Thank you for these special moments this morning in your presence, in worship and prayer. Comfort us today. Bring us supernatural rest as we carry the loads that we each carry. Either by calming our storm or by calming us in this storm. Work in us today. Refresh us in your presence and lead us to where you want us to go. Give us wisdom, Lord, as we seek to be faithful, to bring you all the glory and all the honor that you deserve. We pray in your name. And everybody said, amen. I. I pray you sense that refreshing and strength today as we come into his house. And speaking of God deserving glory and honor, today you are about to witness a true miracle. We have a very special guest speaker. About three weeks ago, she developed a passion to share a sermon. With all that has been on my plate and all that's been going on in many of our lives and her repeated, relentless requests to share a sermon, I said, well, maybe God's in this. And she's going to share today. This young lady just turned 15. Just turned 15. 
Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't want to steal her message, but I will share. You need to understand how miraculous this is in an answer to prayer. She's our miracle girl. One time the doctor said she had 0% chance to survive her medical complications. One of the most uh, remarkable miracles I've seen in my life is when 0% plus God can equal anything and she was healed. Powerful miracle, miracle. But even greater miracle happened about three weeks ago. And it's a, it illustrates what we've been studying in the book of 1 Corinthians. So she's going to be standing up here as an example of what we've been learning about with the working of the Spirit in the church in our study in Corinthians. If you recall, the Apostle Paul has shared two profound truths as it pertains to the church body. He tells those in the Corinthian church, chapter 12, verse 13, for we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body. That baptism is not water baptism. That is a baptism of faith into the body. When we get saved, when we become a believer, that is the spirit baptizing us into the body. And that is miraculous. That's probably the greatest miracle. You probably all have family or friends and they have not surrendered to Jesus yet. They have their doubts and their concerns and they, they had just, you can't even talk about the Bible or the things of God with them. It takes a miracle for that to change. You're about to witness uh, another miracle that happened in uh, her life. It says... Baptized by one spirit as to form one body, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. And as we drink of God's spirit, he changes us. He turns the lights on. He, he, he reveals himself in ways that no one else can. The spirit has to do that in our life. And it's miraculous. It says, even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many so, first, number one, the Spirit baptizes us into the body. It's a work of the Spirit in our life. Boy, praise His name for the work of the Spirit, bringing us to faith. It's His work that we get saved and we become part of the body of Christ, the hands and feet of Jesus. The second profound thing uh, mentioned in that is once the Spirit baptizes us into the body it's the spirit that gives us gifts for the rest of the body we talked about this the last couple of weeks every member of the body is given spiritual gifts to be a blessing to the rest of the body and this young lady is living that out right now just three three weeks ago she'd literally had an aversion to talking about the things of god didn't want to hear about the Bible. Her mother and I would attempt to do devotionals, and there was literally like a cringe, like chalkboard. She, I don't want to go there. I don't receive that. Sometimes literally telling us to her face, Mom and Dad, you know I don't believe what you believe. We were all encouraged to fast and pray for our special speakers. I did that. Praying for this young lady that God would touch her life in the services with Greg and Robert and Hubbard when they came. Well, something happened in one of those services. Now, this young lady, she's obsessed with wanting to use her gifts to share about Jesus. So I'll let her tell you about that. Would you mind standing with me to welcome to the platform today my beautiful daughter, Zoe Keith.
we're going to make this work. You. you may be seated. Thank you. Wow, what, what an intro that was. <laughs> um, okay, so before I get started, I want to invite a couple people up here on stage just to, you know. So I, I know there's a few people that aren't here that I've listed, but whatever, I'm just going to mention them for those that are watching online. Anyway, so I'm going to invite a few people. So when I call your name, please come up on stage. Karen Crosscut Miller and um, Paul Kitchen, which is my uncle, Carolyn Kitchen, my aunt, Jill Scully, Brooke Nollinger, um, Troy Keyes, my dad, also the pastor, and the rest of the people. That's it. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I'm just waiting. <laughs> All right. So you guys have basically, I just wanted to thank you guys for, you know, all the support. Um, I, I mean, like my dad said earlier, I didn't really believe in Jesus before and all that. But, you know, you guys have kind of helped me with that. And, you know, it's just kind of nice. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right. So I am going to be talking about my connection with Jesus Christ, also my faith. So if you guys are wondering what um, faith means, it actually means strong belief, which also means that, belie that you believe very strongly. Yeah. Um, one thing, um, I, know this, I know that you guys might freak out about this, but you guys might think that I've lived a normal life my whole entire life. That's actually not true, actually. I actually, I had a perfect, perfect and normal life when I was born. Um, I don't know if there's a pic, but if there is, can you pull that up? Yep. Okay, so there's the first one. <laughs> That's me. Like, literally, a baby of me. Like, I was normal there. There's another pic there. <laughs> I look cute, don't I? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, but one thing, that all changed. That actually all changed. I got sick, and I had to be on ECMO for 70 days. Yeah, I'll say that again, 70 days. And um, for those that don't know what ECMO is, it's basically like a life support machine thingy. And I, this was me, I guess, before my surgery. I know, it, it's really sad. And then the other one, that's me, basically when I guess when I was actually dying, like, I don't think I was dead yet, but I was dying. So, <laughs> and there's another one, me, I guess, I don't know, I guess, I don't, I don't know how to explain that one, but that's another one of me. Um, okay, anyway. Yeah, you're probably thinking, no way, Jose, about that. Because I, you guys have probably not believed that, that I was on ECMO and that I was going to die. Well, some of you. But, okay, think about it, though. If I was in a hospital for such a long time, then I probably wouldn't have lived through now, right? However, here I am standing here this morning doing this sermon for y'all. And, um... I don't know if there's another pic. Oh, <laughs> there's another one of me. I guess, I think that was when I was recovering. I don't really know. <laughs> That's me actually when I arrived home from the hospital and I was actually going to live. So 
that's nice. That's actually one of the best moments ever. Like, that's one thing that the whole family will never forget. Me coming home from the hospital when I was supposed to die. I was supposed to die. But then I, I literally, somehow Jesus was like, okay, you're not dying. You're gonna, you're gonna live. So, anyway. Yeah. So, Jesus basically thought, hey, you know what? No need to cry. Your daughter will live, and she will see the light of day. You know why? Because I can do all things and make anything and everything possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of you know this, but Jesus loves children. I mean, not just children, but basically every person sitting here. Basically every person in the whole entire world. He loves everybody. And he created us because he wanted us to share love, reflect his image, experience his goodness, care for the world, uh, bring glory to him, and receive experiences. Now, according to this one verse, which I'm pretty sure you guys are all familiar with this, John 3.16 now, I want all of you guys to read this one with me because, you know, this one's familiar. So this one says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. There you go. <laughs> all right. Um, wait a minute. Eternal life. He wants us, yes, ourselves. To have an eternal life. So he wanted me to have an eternal life. That's amazing. You guys should be happy that you guys are currently living. You know why? Because Jesus created us. I'm happy that I'm living. My parents are happy that they're still living. My friends are happy that they're still living. Everybody's happy, like pretty sure all of you, that they are still living. Because whether you guys believe it or not, it's because of Jesus himself. Yeah. Um, okay. You guys still realize that when you pass away, you get to meet him, right? Whenever you, go to, whenever you guys go to heaven, make sure to, like, thank him for what he's done in your life. Because it's, cause he sure as heck is a good father. All right. Another amazing verse. This is another verse. Romans 10.9 says this. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay, now, I want everybody to say this with me. Hold on. God raised who? His son. That's what? Okay. You guys were supposed to say his son, so. <laughs> if you guys didn't know. <laughs> so... Anyway, okay, this, okay, uh, another verse, um, this one is John 14, 6, and it says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father, which is Jesus, except through me, which is also Jesus. Remember that. One last verse, this one is John 6, 44. This one says, no one can come up to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. Okay, so one question. Who is the Father? Yep, and who is himself? Yep, that's right. <laughs> And these verses, all of them, relate to myself and my relationship with Jesus. All right. Now, this is the part that you guys have all been waiting for. For probably, I don't know, not 10-ish minutes, but I don't know. I don't know if you can guess what it is, but can you guess? Jesus! Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> all right. Well, it's actually time to talk about my faith with Jesus. Okay, <laughs> so um, who's ready? Hands up for those that are ready. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot of people. Okay, pretty much everybody. All right, so 
Ever since I was little, I, I didn't really have a connection with Jesus. I remember my parents telling me since day one that Jesus was three people. He created us. He died on the cross for us, and etc. Guess what happened? Yeah, I didn't believe in any of that. I thought that I, uh, oh, hold on, I, I skipped a page, wow. Um, what happened? Yeah, okay. I thought that Jesus was a made-up person. I thought it was just a big old fairy tale. For real, I thought it was. And ever since then, I wasn't even interested in him. I wasn't interested in the Bible and nothing else that had to do with him. I wasn't even interested in church. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Every single time my parents would tell me something that had to do with the Bible or church, I didn't believe in anything that any of them said to me. There was even a time when my dad said, children are called sheep in the Bible. I said, that's rude. Why are they called sheep? I, I literally thought that children were being made fun of, and that's why they were referred to as sheep. But then I realized that they were called sheep because there was a shepherd, and he had sheep. Okay, I get it now. Jesus is our shepherd. Yeah. All right. Um, let me see. Since I wasn't into Jesus back then, I started getting interested into Satan. And I know, this is, I know that's weird, but yeah. But Satan's also the devil. Oh, wait, what? How come he's called the devil? It's because he doesn't like it when you worship Jesus and that you should only worship him. It's also because he does a ton of bad stuff, such as killing people, harassing people, bullying people. Even hurting people, which also applies to killing. Hey, mister, that ain't nice. Okay, okay, but for real. If I wasn't into Jesus, then who else would I have been into at the time? Hello? <sighs> However, later on over the years, I started engaging more with more church services here. While mostly getting bored, but I will occasionally learn some stuff from the messages. And I basically watch services here now instead of just going on a device and watching stuff on there like I used to do when I was younger. Yeah, when I was younger, I did not even pay attention to the services, not even one part of it. So that was pretty bad. Uh, okay, fast forward to this year, when a few weeks ago, a special guest speaker came in for three whole days to do their own sermon. His name was Greg Hubbard, and to be honest, he was amazing. His sermons were so much fun and I got really engaged with them. So one day, it was the last, um, it was the last day of the guest speaker sermon and we were doing worship and Brooke Nollander, who is here this morning, led worship perfectly. I remember that every youth student was there, that was there, including me, were asked to come up to the altar and just pray for the people around us. I prayed. But I only did it in my head, and I wasn't really touching anyone. After a bit of prayer and worship time, Greg came back up, and he asked any youth student that wanted to come up on stage and say this very special thing. My name is, and I belong to Jesus Christ. And guess what happened? I came up, and I said, my name is Zoe, and I belong to Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? After, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> After I was praying, I felt like coming up and saying that. <clears throat> you know what that also meant? It also meant that I was a believer. Um, there's actually a video that I'm going to show right now, and it actually shows me probably a few other people saying that. So let's watch the video. I'm just going to just ask for Carol just to play real, real soft and play it so beautiful. But I'm going to ask some young people to do what I've asked young people to do around the world. If you don't do it, it doesn't mean God isn't touching you right now. If you don't do it, it doesn't mean that you like let God down and you fail. But we are young people around the world to publicly make a declaration that they belong to Jesus Christ. I remember at a conservative youth rally, hundreds of kids in Romania. They said the kids here will never respond. Girls on one side, boys on the other. Conservative. Not much, whatever. 
and I, I, what I asked them, what I'm asking you, I said, I just want someone to stand up and say, make the statement, my name is, and I belong to Jesus Christ. That's all I wanted to say. And so I said, I just want somebody with some courage among your peers publicly to stand up and say, my name is, and for me, it's my name is, my name is Greg Hubbard, and I belong to Jesus Christ. That's all I wanted to say, nothing more, nothing more. And there was silence for, you know, an awkward period of time at that. And then a 17-year-old kid named Christopher jumped to his feet and said, my name is Christopher, and I belong to Jesus Christ. And the moment he did, it was like fire fell in that room. And one by one, boys and girls, some their face sopping wet with their own tears, publicly proclaimed that my name is, and I belong to Jesus Christ. It's the only way to walk with God's hand on your life is to surrender and belong to Christ on your knees. I'm going to ask, we're going to wait a few minutes, but I want someone, I'm going to ask for many of you to walk up one at a time. I'll put the mic in front of your mouth. All I wanted to say, my name is, and I belong to Jesus Christ. I want you to walk up with your friend. I just want you to walk up one at a time. So you can take courage could take courage. Who's going to be first tonight? Quickly, somebody make, take the first step. My name, just, come, just walk right up, whoever it's going to be. Whoever's, come on, buddy, that's it, buddy. My name is Jonah, and I belong to Jesus Christ. My name is Becca, and I belong to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Way to go, Michael. Michael, someday when I get to heaven, I want hair just like you, Michael. Just like you. I love it, buddy. Come on up here, pal. My name's Lincoln Yukon, and I belong to Jesus Christ. My name is Zoe, and I belong to Jesus Christ. thought it was going to continue, but okay. <laughs> um, yeah, there was more people than me and those other kids. Um, so yeah, the reason why I'm actually here though, is that I'm actually here to make an announcement. I am officially a believer. <laughs> Doing what Greg said was important for me. I said, my name is Zoe, and I belong to Jesus Christ. Wow. That is, all right, I'm, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> I, don't wanna be, I don't wanna be talking while you guys are clapping. All right, that is one thing that my family, including myself, will never forget. Cause I'm different now. Okay, so actually, today I wonder if somebody else would like to say, my name is, and I belong to Jesus Christ. You guys actually might get the chance to say that right now because we're gonna have a closing song. And I would like to invite everybody to come up to the altar. And if anybody wants to, they can come up on stage and say, my name is, and I belong to Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter how young or old you are, but I think that would be a good idea. So if anybody wants to come up, please. Now everybody just come up for a closing song and let's sing.
Anybody that wants to come up and say, my name is, and I belong to Jesus Christ. I think we have a first person. My name is Paula DiDonisio, and I am a child of God with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, girl. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Just, just come up. My name is David, and I belong to Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, just waiting, that's all. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. My name is Toby, and I love Jesus Christ. Woo! Praise the Father. Nice. All right, I don't know if there's anyone else, but if there is, come up. My name is Dan Youngs, and I belong to Jesus Christ. My name is Kristen, and I belong to Jesus Christ. Yay! <laughs> yes! All right. Anyone else, or else I'm probably going to move on. Uh, oh, okay. My name is Jason, and I belong to Jesus Christ. Yay! My name is Nathan King, and I belong to Jesus Christ. Yay! My name is Marcela, and I belong to Jesus Christ. My name is June Peterson, and my, and I belong to Jesus Christ too. Good job. Wow, it's gotten. My name is Serenity, and I belong to Jesus. Nice 
job. Yay. I'm so glad people are coming up and saying that. It basically showed that they were basically believer of Jesus. Like, seriously. <laughs> All right. Um, huh? What's that? Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, all right, I'm just going to move on. So is this going to lead me to getting baptized? Well, yeah, I don't know. I might get baptized. I might not get baptized. But whenever I do, I'm just going to. And going back to, like, the very beginning when I was mentioning people, I actually forgot to mention a few people, especially one of them that is not here today, my mom, Rhonda Keith. I didn't mention her either. So she's, she was supposed to be here, but she's actually sick right now. So if you're able to, please pray for her. Um, I don't know if there's anybody else. Let me see. Um, a few other people that aren't here, but I'm going to mention them anyway. Um, Donna Burnham, um, Julie Giebel, Dan Giebel, Sherry Pinkney, Marissa Keith, which is my sister. And I don't know her last name, but uh, Beverly, she's in a wheelchair. I don't think she's here, but if she is, not, then I'm still going to message her anyway. Um, Lisa Conti, I think, and then um, I don't know if she's doing nursery or whatever, but uh, Kirsten Reed. Those are all the people I'm going to mention that are not here or are here. They're just not in here. So, yeah. All right. So, yeah. All right. So, I guess my dad's going to come up and pray or whatever now. <laughs> of us has been given gifts to use to bless the rest of the body. I hope you can see you all next week. We'll talk more about that. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your spirit in the room. Thank you for what you've done in Zoe's life. Praise your holy name. You've heard our prayers. You've answered. You've changed her. She's a believer. And Lord, for these others that came up today and announced their believers, Lord, in the name of Jesus, bless them today, encourage them, protect them from the enemy, strengthen them, Lord, each one. Lord, we give you ourselves fresh today. We are grateful for your son, Jesus. Jesus, we love you. We love you, Jesus. Bless our brothers and our sisters as we go, we pray in your name. Give somebody a big old hug and say, see you next week.